Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we're doing question one of September 2023, Mathematics Paper 1, which is first from the First Aid Province. Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we're doing question one of September 2023, question paper, Mathematics Paper 1, First Aid Question Paper. So let's go. So question one, 1.1.1 to 1.1.4 is solved for x. So you are given four equations to solve. So this is the first one. So this is the dream situation. You wish they give you something like this all the time. Right? So they're saying this bracket times this bracket is equal to zero. So if you multiply two brackets and the answer is zero, at least one of them is zero. Right? But you don't know which one of them is zero. So it's either the first bracket with x minus 1 is equal to 0 or 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So to have a 0 this side, which means your x should be equal to 1. And this side transform with the 1. So 2x is equal to minus 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x is equal to minus 1 over 2. So in order to have 0 here, your x should be minus 1 over 2. Then you go to the next one, 1 by 1 by 2. What do we have? We have x minus 1 and 2x plus 1 is equal to 4, right? So this looks similar to the first one, except that there is 4 there. We only do this only when you have what? Only when you have 4 there. Sorry, only when you have 0 on the right hand side. If you have a non zero number this side, then you have to multiply the bracket throughout. Right? So we have to multiply this bracket. So let's go. So this times this, times that, this times this, times that. Right? So we have the situation of your x times 2x plus 1. Minus 1 times 2x plus 1 is equal to 4. So multiplying this bracket by these two guys here. So what do we have? We have 2x squared. Uh, 2x squared plus x minus 2x minus 1 is equal to 4. Then you group together the like terms. So this guy. So let's go. So we have 2x squared down here. These two are on the same group. Minus x minus 1 minus 4 is equal to 0. So what we have? We have 2x squared minus x minus 5 is equal to 0. So when you here, you put this on your quadratic formula. So we do this on your quadratic formula. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant all over 2a. What do we have? We have x is equal to negative b. What is your b? Your b is minus 1 plus or minus the square root of what? b squared, which is minus 1 squared minus 4a, and your a is 2. And the c is minus 5, all divided by a, which is your a is 4. So this is your quadratic equation. Right? So just punch that straight away and see how your answer will look like. Let me punch it so you can do the same thing. So your x equal to 1 plus or minus square root of 41 all over 4 which means your x is equal to or your x is equal to go get the decimal points it's 1 comma 85 and the other one minus 1.3 so these are your x values. 1.1.3. What do we have? We have x plus the square.
square root of x minus 2 is equal to 4. That's what we have. So what do we do? Uh, we need to isolate this thing. Right? So we need this to be on its own. So we transpose the x to the other side of the equation. So on the right, on the left hand side, we are left with x minus 2 is equal to 4 minus x. That's what we are left with. Alright? Then after isolating this, then we square both sides of the equation, this side and that side. So we will have x minus 2 is equal to, multiply this bracket out, there's two of them. It's 4 minus x times 4 minus x. Multiply this bracket out. So x minus 2 is equal to 16 minus 8x plus x squared. Right? So transpose these to the other side. So we have 0 is equal to x squared minus 8x minus this x plus 16 minus 2. Right? Actually, it should be plus 2 because it's negative. So when you transpose it to the right hand side, it should be positive. So we have 0 is equal to x squared minus 9x plus 18. Right? So I factorize this. So 0 is equal to. Or use the quadratic formula if you don't know how to factorize. So it's x here, x there is 3 and 6 so it's minus minus so your x is equal to 3 or your x is equal to 6 right so now you found two values of x now you must test them and see if they are correct which means substitute your 3 here and there and see if you will get 4 if you get 4 right then which means this value is correct. Same applies to that one. So let's try that. Uh, so we have 3 plus square root of 3 minus 2. We get 4. So this value is fine. Let's go and check the second one. The second one, there are red flags already. Because this is 6, which is already bigger than 4. Right? And whatever that will come up here will to be positive. So, the answer of this will be bigger than that. So, I can see that this one is wrong already. Because I'm saying, if you put 6 here, you can see that whatever this is, is bigger than 4. And you, on top of that, you'll be adding something else that is from under the square root, which will be positive. So, you could also add more value to this, to the, le to the left-hand side of our equation. But let's do it. So, 6 plus square root of 6 minus 2. 8 and 8 is not equal to 4. So this value is invalid. Not correct. So we move. Go to 1.1.4. 1.1.4. 1 what did they give us? They gave us 3x squared plus x is less or equal to 0. So we we'll find the critical values. So 3x squared plus x is equal to 0. Alright? Then now, we factorize. Common factor there is x, or maybe you can put that in a quantity formula if you don't know how to. Your a is 3, and your b is 1, and your c is 0, because c is not here. So you'll be fine. So we factorize this. We have x, right? So inside we're left with 3x. Plus 1 is equal to 0. So you are multiplying two things, this x and this thing here, and the answer is 0. So in order to achieve, achieve 0 when you multiply these two, either your x should be 0 or 3x plus 1 should be 0. So for x here, 3x is equal to minus 1 divided by 3 divided by 3. x is equal to minus 1 over 3. So those are your values of x. Um, your critical values. But now, what the values of x where this thing is negative, right? This is non-positive. Just it is less or equal to zero. 
So it's then positive where we draw it. So we have zero here. And we have some minus one and three something here. So if you look at it, it's a positive parabola. So uh, it will be something along the lines of this. Right? So what it where it is non positive, which is less than or equal to zero. This is less than or equal to zero from here all the way to there. What are the values of x? The values of x are these values that are here between minus three, minus one over three, and zero. So the values of x that are here are between minus one over three and zero. Or one would say the x is less or equal to zero greater or equal to minus one over three. This is your solution for 1.1.4. It does make sense. So what I'll do, I'll clean the board to 1.2 and 1.3. Okay, so now we're doing 1.2. 1.2 it as follow. So there is an equation there. So for x and y in the following simultaneous equations. So they wanted to solve for x and y simultaneously from these two equations here. So how do we do this? So when you look at this, you look at the one that is not very scary. This is a linear equation, right? Linear equations are the nicest. So I'm not scared of this one. I think this one is much simpler. So from this one, you solve for your x or solve for your y. But since my x has a coefficient of two, it will give me problems because I'll have something all over two. But this one it doesn't have any this coefficient is 1. So let me solve for y. So from this one, I can solve for y. So y is equal to 17 minus 2x. Right? Then now, I've solved for y on this equation, on this one. Done with it. So come to this one. On this one, when we say y, we substitute this thing. Because we said y is this thing, right? So now we have x, y is equal to 8, which means where? We see y. We substitute this thing. So which means we have x times y, which is 17 minus 2x is equal to 8, right? Which is 17x minus 2x squared is equal to 8. So 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 17x plus 8 is equal to 0. Right? So you can factorize this thing or use quadratic. Let's try to factorize it. What are the factors of 2x squared? It's 2x and x, right? What are the factors of 8? And I'll say it's 8 and 1. So this one is positive. So which tells us either both of my signs are positive or both of them are negative, right? So since the middle term is negative, so that tells me that both of them should be negative. So this times that is minus 16x. This times that is minus x. So when you add them, it gives you the middle term, which is minus 17x. So these are our factors. So 0 is equal to 2x minus 1. And x minus 8. So which means 2x is equal to 1, or x is equal to 8, right? So divide by 2, divide by 2, x is equal to 1 over 2. x is equal to half. So now to find y, to find y, you go to this equation here. You want the value of y, you have the value of x that is half and 8. So you say y is equal to 2, 17, minus 2 times x. What is your x? Your x is 1 over 2. So this is 1, so this is 16. So your coordinates are 1 over 2 and 16. Go to the next one. For y, x is equal to 8. y is equal to 17 minus 2 times 8. This is 16. So y is equal to 1. So your coordinates are 8 and 1. So we should be done with this go to the next one, which is 
Okay, so now we're doing 1.3. Simplify the following without using the calculator. So they want you to simplify this thing without using the calculator. So, what do you, how do you go about this? You know that if you have square root of A times square root of B, this is equal to the square root of A times B. Right? This is straightforward. These are your set laws. Right? So it's going to be a similar situation here. So look at this as your A and this one as your B. Which means you take one root, take one root, and underneath you have the square root of 21 x squared minus square root of 5 x squared. Right? Times square root of 21 x squared plus square root of 5 x squared. So this is your A and this is your B. Exactly this. So you multiply this bracket out. So if you multiply this bracket out, you will see that um, you should get this bracket times that bracket. You apply the same rule. So which means you will have square root of 21 squared, right? Times x to the 4, right? Uh, minus this times that, right? So it will be the square root of 21 times 5, something like 105 x to the power of 4, right? Then you see this times that should be positive actually, minus. 5 times 21, that looks like 105 x to the power of 4. Then it will be this times that. It will be minus square root of what? Of 25 x to the power of 4. Just multiply things under the square. Take one square root and multiply the things underneath. So you see that this one and that one will go away. Right? So we are left with what? We're left with the square root of square root 21 squared x to the power of 4 minus that square root of 25 um, x to the power of 4. So we can simplify this. So we can say, okay, we know what we have here. We have 21 x squared all squared, which is the same as this, minus here, we have 5 x to the power 2 all squared. That's the square root. So this is underneath. This is what is underneath here. So this and that go away. This and that go away. So we are left with this with no square root now. So what you're left with, you're left with this long square root. That's very long now, of 21 x squared minus 5 x squared. So 21 minus 5, 21 squared minus 5 x squared. So this is 6 x squared. Right, so what is 16? This is 4 squared x squared with the square root, which is 4 x all squared with the square root. So this and that go away. So the answer should be something like 4x. Yeah, should be something similar to this. Yeah, I hope it makes sense. I'm done with question one. So we'll go to question two.